right, dudes and dudettes. Remember me saying how I was gonna do a few how-to videos on some of the ways that I do my patina and lettering and this, that, and the other? Well, this is gonna be the first one. So uh, I'm doing some lettering on the side of the shop truck, uh, AKA the hodgepodge dodge. Um, I've already done the door lettering a long time ago. I've always wanted to do something on the bed that was, you know, like, like a typical shop truck, parts, sales, service, you know, so on and so forth. So this video, I'm gonna go through how I do it and achieve the results of what I'm about to show you. So like I was saying, I did the door art, you know, back when we first got the truck, so it's just so it would, I, I, I patinaed it on purpose, but I also wanted it to have some of its natural patina. So I sat it out in the weather, you know, while we were building the chassis, this, that, and the other. But what I've always wanted to add was this right here. You know, just to add to the, you know, overall shop truck-esque um, theme I got going with the truck. Um, so anyway, yeah, but this is fully dried, you know, looks weathered and blends right in, I think, with the whole, with the whole style of truck. So I'm going to go over, you know, things needed, how I do it. Uh, I'm not going to go super in depth with process because you'll see that I'm going to try to do a time lapse. Um, but I will go over what I use, how I clean it up, this, that, and the other. So uh, here goes. So I'm a cheater. I like to use stencils. It probably would come out better with a little hand lettering, you know, that way you're able to control more of the uh, paint lay down versus a spray. But I like to use stencils. Um, you can use whatever medium you want, you know, you can you can brush it on, you can spray paint it on, whatever you want to do. It's all going to work the same um, with my method, whether you brush it or spray paint. But I like to use stencils with spray paint, just because that's usually what I have laying around the shop. And there we have it. So, of course, paper towels. Uh, I use Brake Clean just because it's quick, wipes paint while it's still semi-wet, tacky. And just some leftover semi-gloss white. Um, I don't really care for this stuff. As you can see, it dries a little too fast. I like the regular paint, you know, that stays wet just a little bit longer. Um, of course, a bowl so we can spray some paint in there. A cheap Dollar Tree brush so that, you know, on these stencils, of course, you know, you gotta fill in these little areas right here, just so you have full letters, you know, like the P, stuff like that. So anyway, we're gonna do parts, sales, and service on this side, just like we did the other side. Now, unfortunately on this side, I gotta work backwards because I measured from the front of the bed over there on that other side. So we're gonna do, you know, service, sales, parts, backwards, but you'll get the gist. Now, one thing I do need to mention I don't prep my surfaces like I would for a paint job or to do like a clean painting because you're actually going to use the contaminants that are on the surface, you know, dust, dirt, uh, bird poop, uh, whatever's on the surface. You're actually going to use that to your advantage to make your paint look more worn and weathered. And uh, I'll show that, you know, of course, in the video. So as you can see, first portion came out pretty good. Now you can take it as far as you want with the with the scrubby pad or uh, the brake clean. You know, it's really just up to you at this point how weathered or worn or um, how camouflaged you want it to be or whatever. But um, I kind of like the way this looks. We might go a little more right in here. Looks a little too, you know, straight edged, which really wouldn't have been like that back in the day so uh but anyway we're going to continue on with the uh, parts and sales portion and uh to see how it turns out So 
So as you can see, of course, spraying white on a dark background, you have a little misting from your mask lines. So if you just take your scrubby pad and a, and a paint thinner rag or a brake clean rag, you know, 99% of that will come right off. So I'll show you that here and we'll, uh, we'll blend this in a little better. But overall, I mean, you, you get the gist of it now. Well, there's the finished product. I'm happy with that. I think it blends into the truck pretty good. As you can see, I mean, there's, here's a close up of what it looks like. Got good textures going across it. I mean, it's just so easy to blend it in on stuff like this. And it matches the other side pretty well. Let me know what you guys think. So I hope you guys enjoyed that how-to. Um, hope you got a few tips out of it. Hope you try your own little little things. And who knows, maybe I'll learn something from y'all guys. Um, for those that are going to ask, I did do the doors the same way. Um, I did those about two and a half years ago uh, when we first got the truck because I knew I wanted it to be a shop truck. So uh, it's... It is fake patinaed, but it's also real because I left what was on the truck already underneath that paint. So, uh, same concept on how to do it and everything else. It was just that long ago, and you see how good it's held up. So, uh, anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you like. If you like it, if you don't like it, just let me know. Whatever. Later.